ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد We're going to continue, insha'Allah ta'ala, reading from the explanation of Aqeedah al-Salaf Ashab al-Hadith of our noble Shaykh al-Allama al-Walid Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali, hafidahu Allah ta'ala, wa matta'ahu bil-sahha wal-afiyah wa ghafara lahu wa li-walidayh, wa lil-muslimina wal-muslimat, ameen. We're still in a chapter in which the Imam al-Sabuni رحمه الله تعالى وغفر له ولوالديه is talking about the waswas of the shayateen the whispering of the shayateen and remember the Shaykh Hafidah Allah Shaykh Rabi'i says the shayateen here are the shayateen of the jinn and the human being as well there is shayateen amongst the human being those who call the people to evil and those who try to uh, deceive the people and move them out of the path of Allah they are shayateen whether they those who call to shirk or they beautify to the people the path that leads to kufr or innovations and the like قال الإمام الصابون رحمه الله وإن الله يسلطهم على من يشاء الله سبحانه وتعالى سند الشياطين upon whom he wills قال نعم الذي يريد الله الله أن يضله يسلط عليه الشياطين الشيخ says for those that Allah wants them to be misguided then Allah sent the shayateen upon them. As Allah tells us in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 186, Those whom Allah misguides, no one can guide. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي سُورَةِ الْكَهْفِ مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدِ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًا مُرْشِدًا The last part of the ayah 17. He whom Allah guides, he is the rightly guided. But he whom he sends astray, for him you will find no wali, no guiding friend to lead him to the right path. Also in Surah Al-Sajda, Shaykh Rabi Ta'ala, he mentioned the ayah, uh, 13 of Surah Al-Sajda قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ولو شئنا لآتينا كل نفس كل نفس هداها ولكن حق القول مني لأملأن جهنم من الجنة والناس أجمعين and if we had willed surely we would have given every person his guidance but the word from me took effect about the evil doors that I will fill the hell with jinn and mankind together. Qal al-Shaykh Rabih Habid Allah Ta'ala from the Aqeedah of the Salaf we know that Allah has written it's written in the book Allah al-Mahfud those who are the wicked ones and the uh, the happy ones so those who are amongst the wicked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send upon them the, the, the shayateen the devils because such people do not deserve to be guided and so therefore they don't deserve the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they don't deserve the protection of Allah they don't deserve the care from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who Allah knows in his knowledge that they are wicked wretched 
then they don't deserve guidance nor the protection and the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قال الإمام الصابون ويعصم من كيدهم ومكرهم من يشاء and Allah protects from their plot meaning the plots of the shayateen both the devils and the shayateen amongst the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects from their plots and from their evil whom he wills as well. We ask Allah to protect us from their plots. I mean قال الشيخ ربيع حفظه الله أيها الذين كتب الله لهم السعادة يحفظهم من تسليط الشيطان عليهم لأنهم أولياء فيحفظهم ويحميهم He says this meaning here what the Sabuni, Imam Sabuni meant by this statement He said those that Allah has written for them سعادة, happiness Those that are going to be happy and may Allah make us from them I mean. He says Allah protect them from the shayateen Allah protect them from the plots of the devils and from the shayateen. Because these people that Allah has written for them, sa'ada, joy and happiness, they are the awliya of Allah. They are the righteous among His servants. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are righteous. Because these are the awliya of Allah. على إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون Verily the أولياء of Allah which usually they translate as friends of Allah but that translation is deficient okay meaning the أولياء of Allah those are close to Allah and those that Allah protect them and preserve them and care for them why because they are the true believers of Allah and they are righteous. They are righteous. Not the wali of Allah, the one who come up with magic, like some ignorant people. You find some a Sophie who he, he, he deals with some jinn and shayateen and they help him to do something or drink hot water. Huh? It's seemingly like the people seeing him drinking hot water, but it's not. And then to the layman, oh, that's a wali. That's a wali Allah, the one who who stick a needle in his eye. But it's nothing. It's just tricks from the shayateen. Huh? But that's not the wali. Those, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, says those are awliya shayateen. The wali Allah, you don't know him. He, they don't even seek fame. The awliya of Allah, they don't come out in front of the people and start doing stuff so that to to be recognized. Actually, the awliya of Allah, they run away from fame. Whatever they do, they want to keep it between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the awliya of Allah, Allah protect them and preserve them. وَإِذَا اسْتُدْرِجَ الْمُؤْمِنُ وَفَقَهُ اللَّهُ لِلْتَوْبَةِ فَتَابُ وَأَنَابِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَبَارِكُ وَتَعَالَى He says, even when you find sometimes the believer in a time of weakness, as the Shaykh is going to mention, and they wrong themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them tawfiq, and assist them and aid them to make tawbah and to repent. So you'll find that believer, even though they wrong themselves, he will go back to Allah and turn to Allah with repentance. قال الشيخ ربيع يعني إذا استدرجه الشيطان وتغلب عليه وطرأ عليه الضعف البشري فوقع في معصية أو وقع في انحراف سرعان ما يرجع إلى الله تبارك وتعالى لأن الله يقول ولم يسروا على ما فعلوا وهم يعلمون He says when the believer who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have taqwa if the shaytan overpower him sometimes because he's a human being the believer is still a human being have some weakness but if the shaytan really got them at one moment and therefore they wrong themselves or they be upon deviation, surely and quickly they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance. Even though they commit a sin, but quickly they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask for forgiveness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he described that his mercy and forgiveness are for those who turn to him and ask him for for uh, for, uh, for for forgiveness as in surah az-zumar he says they do not persist upon 
the sin while they know. Because the ayahs began by this beautiful ayah in Surah Al-Zumar, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا O my servants who have wronged themselves, they commit a lot of sins, never despair from the mercy of Allah. Aina. قال الشيخ ربيع حفظ الله فالمؤمنون ليسوا بمعصومين ولكن هذه ميزتهم he says نعم the believers they are not infallible there is not a believer that he doesn't wrong himself and doesn't disobey Allah but they have this quality this good quality which is الثبات على الحق وحماية الله لهم that they are firm upon the truth that's one of their quality and the other good quality Allah protect them Allah protect the believers. فَإِذَا زَلَّ أَحَدُهُمْ رَجَعَ إِلَّهِ تَبَارِكَ وَتَعَالَ وَتَابَ وَأَنَابْ فَيَقْبَرُ اللَّهُ تَوْبَتُهُ He says, when one of the believers, the true believers, uh, when one of them uh, wrong himself, أي نعم, commit a sin, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, quickly, because of that iman they have, quickly he turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repents and Allah accept their tawbah and repentance وَيَرْتَفِعْ إِلَىٰ أَعْلَىٰ مِنْ دَرَجَتِهِ الْأُولَىٰ بِسَبَبِ تَوْبَتِهِ وَخْلَسِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَىٰ and this is a believer who committed a sin quickly turn to Allah ask for, for, for forgiveness and repent the shaykh he says Allah will raise him to a better level than he was before the sin because of his sincere repentance because of his sincere repentance. And of course, this doesn't mean that a person says, okay, Allah raised level, let me commit a sin and repent sincerely. This is not how we work. He says, who guarantee you, as Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, he says, he says, if a person thinks like that, he says, who guarantee you that you're going to be, that you're gonna be uh, uh, repenting from that sin immediately? Or who guarantee you that you'll be alive after that sin? Some people, they may die while committing the sin so this is not the case but a person should protect himself should stay away from the haram from the sins but being a human being if shaitan have tricks you know you may escape certain hours, but others may corrupt with any one of us but we learn that at that moment we should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with repentance and ask for forgiveness be sincere and that's how a person will be raised now then the Shaykh mentioned the ayat in Surah Al-Isra. Beautiful ayat in Surah Al-Isra. From the ayat uh, 62 to 65. Allah informing us about the shaitan. And the promise that the shaitan he made. And this he made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he will try his best shaitan. Because shaitan has no authority over a human being, but he will try his best to mislead, to try to mislead the, the believers from the progeny and the offsprings of Adam. And keep in mind the shaitan is our enemy, is an open enemy. And this is to understand this ayat because uh, also in Surah Al-Isra Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in in the ayah before that, 61, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ قَالَ أَسْجُدُوا لِمَنْ خَلَقْتَ طَيْنَا And remember when, you, when we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves unto Adam. They prostrated themselves except Iblis, the shaitan. Another ayah says, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنْ So as shaitan, he was from the jinn. Uh, he said, Shall I prostrate myself to one whom you created from clay? So he was arrogant. Out of arrogance, he disobeyed the order of Allah. And we all know the result, the evil result of that. Arrogance and, and disobedience of Allah. So here's the ayat. قَالَ Now the shaykh. قَالَ أَرَأَيْتَكَ هَذَا الَّذِي كَرَّمْتَ عَلَيْهِ لَإِنْ أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَ لَأَحْتَنِي كَنَّ ذُرِّيَّتَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا So the shaitan, Iblis said, See this one whom you have honored above me. 
if you give me, see, subhanAllah, jealousy and the envy and arrogance, you know. He said, if you give me respite, meaning keep me alive, to the day of resurrection, I will surely seize and mislead his offspring by sending them astray, all but a few. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, قَالَ ذَهَبْ فَمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ فَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ جَزَاءُكُمْ جَزَاءً مَوْفُورًا Allah said, go and whosoever of them follows you, surely hell will be the reward of you all, an ample reward. وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا And befool them gradually, those whom you can among them, those whom you can among them with your voice. Shaykh Rabi is going to mention that the voice here with the songs, music, and also that's what they mention in the Noble Quran, meaning with the songs, music, subhanAllah. This is from the tools of the shaitan. And any other call for Allah's disobedience, any call that leads to disobeying Allah, make assaults on them with your cavalry and your infantry. The infantry, those who are walking, right? The walking army. Share with them wealth and children by tempting them to earn money by illegal ways, usury, or by committing illegal sexual intercourse, and make promises to them. But Satan promises them nothing but deceit. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan wa kafa bi rabbika wakila. Verily, my slaves meaning here the true believers of Islamic monotheism. You have no authority over them, and all sufficient is your Lord as a guardian. Shaykh Rabi Ta'ala, when he mentioned these ayats in Surah Al-Isra, from 62 to 65, he says here, who will ghina He says, assault them with, with, with your voice, he said, meaning with, with singing, songs and music وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِمْ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِلِكَ Likewise make assaults on them with your uh, cavalry and your infantry He says الْخَيْلْ مَعْرُوفَ وَالْرَجِلْ الْمَاشِي Meaning those uh, with horses الْخَيْلْ is horses and also those who are walking قال يعني أجلب وصح عليهم بكل جنودك الراكبين والمشاة فإن الجلب هو الصياح ومعناه انهض بهم إلى الباطل وفعل في سبيل ذلك كل ما تستطيعه said meaning here this part of the ayah it means that do whatever it takes all it means because the shaitan he's gonna he's gonna try his best he's gonna gather all of his army those who are riding and those who are walking. Okay? Shaitan come with his army. And remember, we don't see them. But you have to be aware of that. That the shaitan has an army from the human being, from the devils. They come riding, they come walking, they yell, they bring, use, use all means to try to destroy a person and, and to make a person fall into falsehood. وَشَارِكْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ And يعني تسلط عليهم من كل باب Even in their wealth and in their children He said meaning that the shaitan he is going to come from all directions He is going to open so many doors and gates of falsehood and disobedience and ruin and destruction أجلب عليهم بكل ما عندك من القوات. Shaitan will use all of his efforts, all of his strength, whatever he has. فإن هؤلاء الضالين الذين أراد الله لهم الضلال يستدرجهم الشيطان إلى الشرك بالله. So those who 
deserves to go astray and they were misguided then the shaitan lead them to shirk that's why it's important for us to seek refuge with Allah SWT from shirk as Sheikh Ibn Baz mentioned Sheikh Ibn the ulama when they mentioned they said shirk is, is, is the deadliest sin not because it's just like that not randomly but it's very dangerous that's why you find every prophet warn his people against shirk and we have ayats in the Quran that Ibrahim alayhi salam asking Allah to protect him from shirk Rabbi jnubni wa baniya an na'bud al asnaq O my Lord protect me and my offspring from worshipping idols it's very important now you're guided to tawheed but you gotta ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect it from shirk some people they say la ilaha illallah they pray, they fast, they made hajj but they fall into shirk they fall into shirk ask Allah ask Allah protection فَيُشَارِكُهُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَيُشَارِكُهُمْ فِي الْأَوْلَادِ فَيَجْعَلُونَ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ So he will share with them in their wealth and in their children. How? He says by them using that wealth that Allah has given them in, in venues that other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for the sake of Allah. So they will spend this ni'mah of Allah that Allah has given them قال ينفقون هذا المال في شرب الخمر ويرابون فيه ويسرقون من مال غيرهم نعم إلى غير ذلك من التصرفات في مال الشخص نفسه أو في مال غيره بمقتدى ما شرعه الشيطان لا بمقتدى ما شرعه الله عز وجل فهذه مشاركته في الأموال He says so therefore these people they will use this wealth uh, by drinking by, by, by buying alcohol they will uh, deal with riba, usury, billah. They will steal the wealth of others. It's only an example amongst many evil and wicked uh, transactions that the person will do as related to his own wealth or the wealth of others. And the way they gain and spend their wealth or the wealth of others in accordance to what the shaitan tell them, not according to what Allah legislates. And that's why you find the people, they just want to make money, they don't care. They don't care, they just want to make more money. If somebody tell them, but this transaction is haram, they say, get out of here, man, haram, talking about haram, man. You ain't going to put no food on the table. Instead to be patient and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for halal means, they just keep running, deceiving people, cheating them. Uh, those they don't want to do conduct business transaction. They have no clue how a business transaction is conducted according to what's pleasing to Allah. And uh, therefore, all it matters to them is making more money. And they will make only what Allah has decreed for them to make. But it's uh, going to be a great loss for them to uh, earn money from means that are not permissible. And yet, to use that money for, uh, for actions that are not from the actions that Allah SWT has displayed. So he said, these people here, they will do this in accordance to the plans of the shaitan, not to what Allah SWT has legislated. As for the children, include in them the children out of wedlock. وَيَدْخُلُ فِيهِ قَتْلِ الْأَوْلَادِ Likewise, the shaitan, Allah, shaitan make fear seem into certain people some actions, so they fall into zina. They can't wait. Allah, can't wait. And they bring uh, excuses. Oh, he's young. You know? That's why you find some young, young people, uh, 19, 21, already got two, three children out of zina. وَلَيَادَ بِاللَّهِ why they like? Well, he's young. So what you what you expect? <laughs> what they expect? But the one who's guided and the one who's protected by Allah, he fasts. That's what the Prophet ﷺ says. 
she cannot get married fast. Yeah? Nobody, there is no text that said, go ahead, if, if you're young, just go to the, the zina. Rather, a young man came to the Prophet ﷺ and, and he said, give me permission, you know, allow me to commit zina. But the Prophet ﷺ, he taught him a lesson. He said to him, oh, you're young, it's okay for you. No, it's not. Even though the one who's young, older, if he commits zina, that's worse than the one who's younger, but still, it's an evil act. Likewise, it says, يدخلوا فيه قتل الأولاد. Likewise, from the uh, plots of the shaitan, that he uh, leads certain people, بالله, through his plots to kill their own children. وَيَدْخُلُ فِيهِ النَّذْرِ لِلْأَوْثَانِ وَمَا شَكَلَ ذَلِكَ And also some people, they uh, dedicate their children to serve the idols. Take one of his children and they take them to this tomb or, or this and said he's going to clean and, and, and wash and guard this, this man who they call him big sheikh and the like to serve the idols. And it's all from the from the shayateen. Now instead of that father, if that father now has the last protection, hmm, and wants to do what is pleasing to Allah, he has to teach that child the aqidah sahihah. Teach him tawheed and protect him from shirk. He's going to put him in the classes, alhamdulillah, schools, that teach the tawheed, the sound and the proper aqidah, warns against shirk, teach the sunnah and the like. Now this person, because of the shaitan, sees them, okay, now they're going to put their children to learn magic, they're going to send their children to uh, uh, learn shirk, waliyadu billah. وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدُهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا And before that the Shaykh mentioned, all of those who they dedicate their children for these things, to serve, in the, uh, to promote the shirk, or those who they kill their children, hmm? all of this is obedience to the shaitan, and disobedience to Allah. And those who they bury their own little girls alive, in jahiliyyah, hmm? they used to bury the little girls alive. Those little girls have nothing, nothing wrong they've done. And they're all from the plots of the shaitan. So that they did that out of obedience to the shaitan. وَعِدْهُمْ وَمَا يَعِدْهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا And make promises to them, but shaitan, Satan promises them nothing but deceit. قَالَ الشَّيْخِ رَبِيعَ أَيْ حَفِدَهُ اللَّهِ يَعْنِي أَعْطِهِمْ أَمَانِيَّ وَوْعُودًا كَاذِبَ بِالسِّيَادَةِ وَالْعِزَّةِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالنَّجَاتِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَيْدًا that meaning give them promises and uh, false promises, lies. Shaitan nam came to people now, do this, do this, denounce to hate, be upon shirk, promote bid'ah, and we'll give you sta- status, we'll give you money, we'll give you position, and you'll be stronger in this life, and you'll be from those who are saved in the hereafter. That's what the shaitan told play with their minds take them away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them on his path on his path the wrong path you want dunya no problem go ahead that's why sometimes if people they use Islam as an umbrella for politics like al-ikhwan al-mublisun ikhwan al-muslimun so that's why when you hear these classes help us understand more sometimes you hear oh what is the ruling of al-ikhwan al-muslimun can we deal with them Cannot. No, you don't. So, but you don't go in details, then you don't understand. These are people that use Islam. They care about one thing gathering, gathering. Doesn't matter who is who, upon tawheed, no tawheed, sunnah, no sunnah. Just gather the people for, 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 for elections. When election time comes, they will, they will recover. You know, have more enough people to vote for them so they can steal the. The, 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 the seats in the parliament, in the government, in this and that. And that's why you shouldn't deal with Ikna and Isna in here in America. Those Ikna, uh, Islamic circle, 
of North America, ISNA, Islamic Society of North America, and anyone who deal with them, anyone who deals with them. These are people, they are not upon the, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They have agendas. They want to get somewhere. And they cowards. At least if they say, look, man, whatever we are doing here has nothing to do with sunnah, let, let us tell you, we're straight. At least, let us be honest, okay? What we're doing here, guys, if you want the sunnah, you want the haq, well, don't be with us. we political group, straight out. We care about money and power. That's what, who, who we are. If he wants the sunnah, you want tawheed, aqidah, go somewhere else. No, they don't do that. Relax, they promote like, man, if you want a tawheed, come to us. Aqidah, come to us. Sunnah, come to us. And then they take the people away from the sunnah, like Al-Maghrib Institute and all those who are teaching in there. All right? Oh, sunnah, this. What is the sunnah? Aina am barakallahu fikum. So, so he, Shaitan promised them lies that you're going to get there and achieve this in this life and you'll be powerful and because you, you got to be somebody, money, position, and in the hereafter now you'll be okay on the hereafter. No punishment for you. There's no such thing. All right? You're powerful in here. Nobody can touch you. There ain't nothing going to happen to you. <laughs> Shaitan make it seem to them like even though if if there is punishment on Yom al Qiyamah, that's not for you or somebody else. Hey, subhanallah. But they forget, see that's why knowledge is important. Knowledge is very important. Though those who they seek knowledge, alhamdulillah, they understand the truth and the reality of this dunya, the reality of the shaitan, his open enemy. Even when the shaitan, because it's, 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 these temptations are, are serious temptations to, to make money and to follow desires and women out there waiting for you and, and, and the status and, 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 uh, and luxury. and it's not, it's not easy for certain people to, to decline this, especially when it comes to them. They sit with them at a table and say, listen, we want you to be with us. And here it is, you give him a 500,000 check right there. That's, that's just you, that's just like a, a tip. <laughs> tip, $500,000. That's just a tip, man. And here is a big mention that you the man, all right? You got, you got to have power over this entire, this region. And then, subhanAllah, they were like, if somebody doesn't have taqwa, and taqwa doesn't come in a, in a, in a in a syringe, you know, that's a shot that you're going to take. All right? Whether in the left or right arm. Now he comes through knowledge, through taqwa, through, through sincerity, tawheed. If a person doesn't have that, then how are they going to fight these temptations? Somebody's struggling in his life, man, just paying the rent here and trying, has goals and got dreams, and I'm going to do this, but they like, but the paycheck is. Barely paying the bills. Here of goes this guy from a suit come and say, Hey man, forget about this job. We got you, we have a better thing for you. We're promoting a sunnah and this and you you're eloquent and you're a you're a bright person. Come come with us. But that's come with a price. He think this is gonna give him a nice paycheck and a house and a car for nothing? No, they want him to promote the falsehood they are upon. But if a person is not you know, protecting himself and seeking knowledge because you need to know the path of Allah. I am the same way. You know the path that takes to, the, to your house. You live there. And if somebody tell you, I give you a right to your house and you start getting north but you live south, the first thing comes, hey, where are you going? Taking you home. He said, oh, my home is south. Now, now we, we got shortcut. Shortcut? Since when going north be shortcut? Shaitan will take the people away from the path of Allah, but he make it seeming like it's okay. Some people they do a lot of evil and they think they what that's that's the right thing to be to be done. That's Allah subhanahu wa So the Shaykh he mentioned he says that on Yom al Qiyamah, those arrogant ones and that caused many people 
meaning their followers, to go astray, they will they will uh, free themselves from them. They're like, listen, man, why you follow us? And the wicked ones, the weak ones, they will free themselves as, as well. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, اِتَّبَرَّ الَّذِينَ اتُّبِعُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا وَرَأَوا الْعَذَابَ وَتَقَطَّعَتْ بِهِمُ الْأَسْبَابِ When those who were followed, disown, meaning declare themselves innocent of those who followed, who followed them. You see? Those who were followed because they have followers. Look at this Mubtadi'ah now. Look at this Hamza Yusuf. Look at this Yusuf Estes. Huh? Look at these people in Islam, Maghrib Institute. Al-Bayyina, this and Zaytuna, this and that. They have, even ISIS have followers, man. They killing and beheading. If someone cannot see Maghrib Institute, what they're doing wrong, because come on, they teach in Quran, Arabic. What, what can't you see what ISIS are doing, what the Qaeda is doing, what al Nusra and Al-Shabaab and Boko Haram are doing? Anyway, those people who were followed in this life upon falsehood, they freed themselves from those who they followed them. Likewise, those who followed them and those who followed will say, if only we have one more chance to return to the worldly life, we would disown, meaning declare ourselves as innocent from, from them. As they have disowned them. But hey, hats. Are they going to go back to the earth? And then they're going to come to them and say, hey, listen, this, do this. Like, no, we're upon sunnah. Now they have to do it now. Because once you die, that's it. There's no comeback. There's no U-turn. One way. can turn back to life. I know. You die, you, you're dead. So, Yom al Qiyamah, those who they see themselves, they were upon wrong and falsehood and they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're not, uh, yes, they're going to say that. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً فَنَتَبَرَّأَ مِنْهُمْ كَمَا تَبَرَّأُوا مِنَّا See? Those who they follow this ignorant people and these people who call to falsehood, these deviant callers, from the shayateen of the human being and from the shayateen of the devils, they rally behind them and support them. Then on the day of a judgment, if they die upon that falsehood, on the day of a judgment, they will what? They will regret, of course. They see the truth now. In this dunya, somebody tell them, Akhi, stay away from Ikhwan Muslimin. Stay away from Jama'at Tabliya. Stay away from Sophia. Stay away from the Khawarij. ISIS is no good. Billadin is no good. Alright? These are, these are deviant people. The Ahbash are no good. Sufis are no good. Alright? Stay away from that Imam. Stay away from this Jama'ah. Stay away from this Masjid. What they say? Ah, you're just jealous. Because you don't have their Masjids. Look at the chandeliers they have. And the donuts and the coffee all day. And juice and ice cream. Now, yes, they have. If you go to some of these masajid, you find donuts, ice cream, lollipops, and, but you don't find kitab tawheed. You don't find talat at also. Find donuts, they have fridges. Well, fridges! You think yourself in a bodega or something. You know bodega? That's New York term. Huh? Yes, up top, yeah. Uh, a bodega is a, is a grocery store. Little, little tiny ones in the corners. What is it? Yeah, the corn store. Corn store. Corner, yeah, corner. Corner store. Those little stores, they got little, what do they call them? Convenient. Convenient store. That's what I'm looking for. English. Now. Nah. What's the point I'm making? Huh? Oh yeah, yeah. You think you go to some of these big masjid, ten million dollars, seven million dollars masjid? 
You, you, you were like, whoa, the musallah, subhanAllah, that is going to be big for 50,000. And even if it's the case, why would you build a masjid and a big musallah for 50,000 where you don't even, not even have 500 Muslims in the area? Why? But actually, me personally, I, I heard years ago, they, I was in this state, and they said this masjid is like some $19 million. I'm like, Whoa, I'm going to see Masjid al-Haram, what? Something big. Ah, it was a small place. It was big, but then we went to the, to the Musalla. Ah, this Musalla is not even the, the third of this one we, we're in. Not even. But the Masjid is bigger than this like three times. So many rooms. This is the room for uh, meetings. This rooms for... I don't know what, for uh, lounging, this room for uh, uh, chillaxing, this one for chilling, this one for relaxing, yeah, organizing. So many names and rooms that have nothing to do with what the masjid for. This for the sister, this for the teenager, this is for the boys, this is for the elderly, this is a tea, this is that. And then you go to an area to play. They have big area, almost as big as the musalla. They have uh, what do you call it? Huh? Huh? The pool, yeah, the pool table. What do you say? Archery. I ain't do this, man. <laughs> like this. Yeah, they do have the pool table. They have the other ones. What do you call them? Foosball. Huh? I don't know their names. Foosballs. Basketball. Ping pong. That's why I want, sometimes I tell them, because we want to pray in that mission that was, we landed in one of the airports and we go to another city and we stopped, the brother said, can we pray in masjid? And we were by ourselves, we stopped right after Dhuhr, there was nobody there. So we prayed. I'm like, subhanAllah, no wonder how this, they would all of this stuff, food. Yeah, I, I get to the part of the fridges. They have those Pepsi and Coke fridges. The double open and one, like three, four of them, loaded with fruits, with this, with that. I'm like, how are people going to sit in the class of Arabic with all of this fitna in a masjid? And they are open, at least if they close them and they open them only at this time. No. One brother told me, you're right, Akhi. That's, this, that's the exact thing. If there is a class, usually there is no classes in masjids like that. If there is a class, the youth are not in the class. They play. That's Allah salam al Afi. Alayin. Meladi Jarana ila had al Kalam. Meladi Jarana ila had al Kalam. What brought us to this? Talking about this, huh? Naam Lukman. Ah, sent. Allah Akbar. Very good. Hey, now. So now you put us back on the right track. Allah barakfiq. Now, so, so they were like, oh, you're just jealous of them. These people that got big masjid, you're jealous. What is your achievements? They have so many big masjids. And no, you tell them, the achievement is not in material things. The sunnah, people are upon tawheed. If one person is upon the haqq, it's better than thousands upon falsehood. One person. The an yahdi Allah become ru'an. Wahida. So anyway, those who are arrogant on the day of judgment, they will disown those who follow them. minhum. Not only that, shaitan, <laughs> who, did, who made the things uh, uh, beautiful to them and called them to this, shaitan, he will disown himself from his followers. Now, as we're going to read to you the Ayat, inshallah, after the Adhan. So the Shaykh, he mentioned that the shaitan يَتَبَرَّأْ مِنْهُمْ يَقِفُ خَطِيبًا The shaitan will disown himself from those who followed him. Pan shirk, kufr, bida, dalal, name it. As Allah tells us in Surah Ibrahim, وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُدِيَ الْأَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي 
فلا تلوموني ولوموا انفسكم ما انا بمصرخكم وما انتم بمصرخي اني كفرت بما اشركتموني من قبل ان الظالمين لهم عذاب اليم قال الشيخ ربيع وتعالى هذه النتيجه التي يستفيدها من اغواهم الشيطان وعدلهم ان الظالمين لهم عذاب اليم ليس لهم شيء مما يعني امناهم به الشيطان وخدعهم به pay attention to this ayah 22 and we should memorize it review it learn the tafsir of it and shaitan satan will say when the matter has been decided on the day of judgment verily allah promised you a promise of truth and i and i too promised you but i betrayed you allah but I betrayed you. I had no authority over you except that I called you and you responded to me. So blame, so do not blame me, but blame yourselves. I cannot help you, nor can you help me. I deny your former act in associating me, meaning shaitan, as a partner with Allah by obeying me in the life of the war. Verily, there is a painful torment for a zalimun, the piety is on the wrong doors. Sheikh Rabia said, this is the end result. That's it. This is the end result that those whom a shaitan, uh, those who they fell into the, their trick, that's what they benefit. Those who follow the footsteps of the shaitan in this dunya, in this life, that's what they're going to benefit. Nothing but a painful torment. And then the Shaykh began to explain this uh, ayah, this ayah, alhamdulillah, a portion for portion. He says, Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al When the Shaytan says, Indeed Allah has promised you the truth. Ay ala al suni rusulihi wa fi kutubihi wa'ad al Allah has promised you on the tongue of his messengers that he has sent to you. Because the shaitan, he whispers, he invites, but the, but the messengers throughout the time, they call in the people to the haqq, don't listen to the shaitan, stay away from shirk. Shaitan said, no, shirk is good. He beautified the shirk, the, sh- the, the, the messengers, they said shirk is no good. So some people that Allah wants good for, they listen to the messengers, they read what's in the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent, and some others, they fall into the tri- tricks and the traps of the shaitan. أَنَّ مَنْ أَطَاعَ فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةُ وَمَنْ عَصَى فَلَهُ النَّارُ Allah sent a warning on the tongue of his messengers, عليهم الصلاة والسلام. On the books he has sent, they contain the haqq, that he who obeys the messengers, then for such a person is the jannah. And he who disobeys the messengers, for such a person is the hellfire. And of course when we say, he will obey the messengers. That's for those people who Allah sent the messengers. Okay? After uh, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that's it. Nobody else before he says, well, he's going to follow what Isa alayhi salam came with. He's going to follow what Musa is upon. He's going to follow what Musa was, a, or what uh, Harun or, or Suleiman was upon. He won't be accepted from them. Because Islam with Allah is what the Prophet ﷺ brought from Allah. Okay? But when you hear the messengers, the ulama, they mention meaning for those that were sent to their people. Hey now. As after Allah sent our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, everybody has no choice. No, there is no choice, no exception actually, except that everybody, the human being and the jinn, they all have to adhere to the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَنَّ مَنْ كَفَرَ فَجَزَاءُهُ كَذَا وَمَنْ أَشْرَكَ فَجَزَاءُهُ كَذَا Naam. These messengers, they make things clear. They make things clear to their people. He who disbelieve, his reward is this and this. He who committed shirk, die upon it, that's his end result, such and such. أَنَّ مَنْ زَنَى مَنْ سَرَقْ مَنْ قَتَلْ مَنْ فَعَلَ كَذَا he who commit adultery, fornication, he who steals, he who kill others, whoever does in this, 
This is what these people are going to face. كَذَا جَزَاءُهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ This is their, uh, whatever they facing in this life and in the hereafter. So there is prescribed punishment in this life, and yet there is a great torment for those who did not uh, repent from those sins. Of course, there is tough sale in that, as that sin is a major sin, is a minor sin. If it's less than shirk, if it's shirk, of course, okay? Now, وَعَدَكُمُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَعُودًا كُلَّهَا حَقٍّ مِنَ النَّعِيمِ وَالْعَذَابِ وَالسَّعَادَ وَالْعِقَابِ كُلُّ مَا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ بِحَقٍّ Shaytan is telling them, whatever Allah has promised you, is true. When Allah tells you, look, if you commit shirk and die on it, you will be in a hellfire forever, that's true. That's what shaitan is telling them. That the hypocrites, that the, the disbelievers, they will be in the, in the hellfire together, that's promise that is true. He who disobeys the messenger, this was going to happen to him, that's true. He who steal, his hands to be cut off. The one who commit adultery, zina, this, kill somebody with no right, this is the punishment. And those who obey the messenger, those who are upon tawheed, upon aqidah, those who obey Allah, this is their great reward. Everything, the path of good, the path of evil has been made clear in the, in the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the people and the shaitan telling them whatever Allah promised, from good or for bad, it's going to happen. It's the truth. Allahu Akbar. وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Shaitan tell them on Yom Al-Qiyamah, while I promised you and I, what? Let you down. I let you down. I'm letting you down right now. وَأَنَا وَعَدْتُكُمْ وَعْدًا كَاذِبًا Not even, he promised them, he promised them a lies. He didn't promise them something that is substantial and then it turns out that he couldn't do it. No, it was a lie from the beginning. It was nothing. وَأَمْلَيْتُ So that's, you know, ya akhi, that the shaitan, he's, he's a liar, he's the biggest liar. It's a big lie. All his promises stand for nothing but a lie. And there is no good whatsoever come from the plots of the shaitan. Even though the nafs from the weak of iman, a person thinks he's going to get something from that bad transaction. The riba, the yizri, stealing, deceit, deception, arrogance, uh, uh, zina, alcohol, this, that. The nafs thinks that there is some enjoyment in that, but there is no enjoyment for real. Can you imagine if they tell somebody, okay, drink alcohol, go ahead, drink. But as soon as you finish drinking this bottle, somebody's going to kill you right here. See that man right there with a the sword? He's going to finish you. You think that person's going to drink? He ain't going to drink. He's not going to drink. Likewise, somebody bring him, you want to fornicate? No problem, go ahead, go to this room. But as soon as he finish, Something bad is going to happen to you. They're like, no, she can go home, man. I got to go home safe. We'll go home safe too. Nah, so that's only something in this life. What about when the people, they die upon shirk, thinking they were doing something right. And they die upon shirk, die upon kufr, die upon disobedience to Allah. On this Allah, assalamu wa I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We continue next time. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad. على آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا